from Lakeside Loops and today I'm going to show you how to make the Isla Granny Square crochet sweater. Um, I use Bernat's Softy Cotton Yarn and a 4.25 millimeter crochet hook to make this sweater. You will also need a darning needle because you do need to do some very basic sewing um, to get all these squares assembled. And of course, you will need some scissors because you need to make a few of these cute little squares. There's two different squares um, that make up this, sweat, this sweater. Uh, there's one with a circle design in the middle and then one with a square design. The instructions for both are within the pattern and then also how to assemble it, um, all this edging and collar trim. Um, the sleeve just has this natural scallop look to it from the squares and same with the bottom of the sweater. Sorry, it just has this scalloped edge that's created naturally by assembling uh, the granny squares. So for this video, you will need to follow along with the written pattern. You can find that for free on my website, lakesideloops.com. You can also download a printable ad-free version of the pattern, uh, a PDF from Etsy or Ravelry. So the links for any of those are in the description of this video. Uh, again, you will need the written instructions. This video will just cover the basics. Anything that you might have questions about, you will need the written pattern in order to make all of the different sizes. This sweater can be made in size adult, small, all the way up to 5XL. So as size inclusive as possible. Speaking of sizing, um, this is a sort of comfortable fitting sweater. It's about two to four inches larger than your actual chest measurement. Um, and it's slightly cropped. So it'll end about one or two inches below your waist. You could add extra, an extra row of granny squares or you could add an extra row of crochet uh, to the bottom of this to sort of custom the length. Like you could easily turn this into a really cute swimsuit cover up by adding, you know, multiple layers of more squares. Um, also, in order to make this available in multiple sizes, because the granny squares are such a fixed size and such a large fixed size, in order to make this sweater accommodate such a wide variety of sizes, um, there are sections on the side that are just double crochet. So in this particular size, there's only this section of double crochet, but if you're making a larger size, you would have a bit more on the sides that's a solid color. Same with the uh, sleeves. So again, on this side, or this size, this is all that was required for you know the non-square but if you were doing a larger size you may have more of a seam there and also up here so as that side is larger um this gosh sorry i keep <laughs> hitting the camera this seam up here at the shoulder would also be um not a seam but the thick non-square part um, at the shoulder would also be a bit thicker uh, so just something to keep in mind when you're thinking about whether or not this sweater is for you. All right, so this pattern is broken down into different sections. Um, there's square design A, square design B, and then I show you how to assemble it, and then I show you how to add this collar uh, detail. So I will start with how to make the squares, and then I'll show you some of the assembly. All right, so for square design A, which is this square one, as opposed to the one with the circle. Uh, so you're going to start off with a chain of three. So I'm just getting a knot in my yarn. And now you're going to double crochet in the third chain from your hook. So one, two, three, so your very first chain that you made. You're going to work a double crochet. All right, so now we're going to chain two, and now we're going to work three double crochets into that same chain down here that we just worked our other double crochet into. So 
So we have something that looks like this. Now we're going to chain two again. And again, we're gonna work three double crochets into that same chain, that same hole that we've worked all our other double crochets into. So you can kind of see our square, our center square starting to take shape here. Now we're going to chain two again, and then work three double crochets again, you guessed it, into that, what now looks like a center hole. And chain two. And now we're going to double crochet again in the bottom of this beginning chain, that center hole. Just like that. Now to finish, we're going to slip stitch to the top of our beginning chain. So this is our beginning chain right here. And we're going to slip stitch right into the top of it. So that beginning chain ends up sort of counting, sort of looks like one of the double crochets that we did. It's right in the center right here. So all of those double crochets were worked into the bottom of that beginning chain and then we're slip stitching into the top of the beginning chain. And that is this round one of square design A. For round two we're going to chain one and we're gonna single crochet in the back loop only of the first stitch. So right here, single crochet in the back loop only. And what I mean by back loop only is, if you look at these stitches, each stitch has two loops, back loop, front loop. We're only working into the back loop. All right, so single crochet into that back loop of the first stitch. Now we're going to single crochet in the chain two space. So what I mean by chain two space is this hole that we created here with our chain two from our previous round, we're going to single crochet into that hole, okay? So you're going to put your hook in, grab your yarn and pull it through, and then yarn over and pull through both loops to complete a single crochet. Now we're going to chain two and again, we're going to be single crocheting into this chain two space from our previous round. Just like that. Now we're gonna be working, so we're sort of rotating as we go here. Now we're gonna be working along this side and we're going to be single crocheting into the back loop of these next three stitches. here. So front loop, back loop, we're going just into the back loop, grab my yarn and single crochet. Now again we're going to single crochet into this chain two space. So this this hole that we created from the previous round we're going to insert our hook, grab the yarn and pull it through, and then grab the yarn and pull it through both loops. Now we're going to chain two, and again, we're going to single crochet, oops, single crochet into that chain two space. And now we're working on this side. So again, we're single crocheting into the back loop only. get to the chain two space, we're going to single crochet into the chain two space, chain two, so we've got a chain two space for the next round. This, these chain, chains of two are our corners. And now we're going to single crochet again into that gap space. And then we're going to single crochet into those back loops, 
the next three stitches and then again single crochet into the gap space chain two single crochet into the gap space and now we're going to single crochet into the back loop of this stitch right here And now we're going to join with a slip stitch to the beginning of our chain. We just had a chain of one, so just joining with a slip stitch into that beginning chain. That is round two. You can see our square is starting to take shape. All right, so for round three, we are working on these taller stitches here that have the spaces in between them. So to start us off, we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then we're going to double crochet. So we're gonna skip the first stitch, so we're not gonna do anything into this stitch, nothing into here. We're gonna double crochet into the back loop only of the next stitch. And the chain one and now we're going to double crochet into the chain two space so again each corner we chained two and we created a space here so again I'm gonna yarn over I'm gonna work into that space grab my yarn and pull it through yarn over and pull through two yarn over and pull through two now I'm going to chain two and then I'm going to double crochet into that space again so I'm creating another corner here. So this chain two is going to be that corner. Now I'm going to chain one and I'm gonna double crochet in the back loop only of this next stitch. So I chained one, but I didn't skip one. I'm just going right to the next stitch that single crochet from the previous round and I'm working a double crochet into that. Now I'm going to chain one and skip one. So I'm going to skip this one and double crochet into the back loop only of the next stitch. And now I'm going to chain one and skip one again. So I'm skipping this one and I'm going to double crochet into the back loop only of that single crochet on the end. Now I'm going to chain one and again I'm going to double crochet into the chain two gap space and then I'm going to chain two and double crochet into oops, into that chain two gap space again. Now I'm going to chain one and again I'm not skipping a stitch I'm just chaining one and I'm going to double crochet into the back loop only of the next stitch, which was that single crochet from my previous round. I'm gonna chain one, skip one, and double crochet into the back loop only, chain one, skip one, and double crochet into the back loop only. So you might notice a pattern here. We're always double crocheting into those single crochet stitches. At the corner, we're always chaining one, double crocheting into our chain two gap space, chaining two, and then double crocheting into our chain two gap space. To create that corner, then I'm going to single, or sorry, chain one, and then I'm going to double crochet into the back loop only of this single crochet stitch, the next stitch in my round. And then again, I'm gonna chain one, skip one, double crochet into the back loop only, chain one, skip one, double crochet into the back loop only. Now I'm gonna chain one and double crochet into my chain two gap space, chain two, double crochet into my chain two gap space, chain one, double crochet into this 
first stitch. And now at the very end, we're going to so chain one more and then I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the second chain in my beginning chain. So again, we're gonna make this chain act like a stitch and we want to have a chain in between the double crochet and our chain since we're pretending this is a stitch. So I've double crocheted, I've chained one and now I'm going to slip stitch into the second chain of this beginning chain. So one, two. So right here is where I'm going to slip stitch to close off that round. And then that way that third chain is acting as the space between my beginning chain and the first double crochet that I made. So that was round three. We're almost, we're getting there. We're so close. All right, so for round four, I wanted to do another short round um, and I wanted to really highlight those gap spaces um, with single crochets. So you're going to chain one and you're going to single crochet into the chain one space. So this gap that's between our beginning chain and our first double crochet, we're going to single crochet into that. And then we're going to single crochet into the back loop of that double crochet stitch from the previous round. And then we're going to single crochet into the chain one space and then into that single or the double crochet from the previous round. Now, when we get to our corner, you might be able to guess, we're gonna single crochet into the gap space that we created with the chain two. We're gonna chain two to create a new corner, gap two space. And then we're going to single crochet again into that corner. So basically, whenever we get to a double crochet, you're single crocheting into the back loop only and whenever you get to a chain one gap space, you're working a single crochet into that gap space. All right, so I'm at the very end of round four. I've single crocheted into the back loop only of this last double crochet, and now I'm going to single crochet into the chain one gap space, and then I'm going to join with a slip stitch to my beginning chain. Like this. Now for round five, we've got another short round, but this one we're creating spaces again. So you're only going to be working into every other stitch again. All right, so we're gonna chain two. And the reason we're chaining two is because we're creating a what will act as a stitch, and then we're creating a chain that will act as a chain one gap space. So we're gonna skip the first stitch after we've chained two, and we're gonna single crochet into the back loop only of the next stitch. So I'm skipping this stitch, I'm gonna work into the back loop only. And now I'm going to chain one, skip one, and single crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch. So again, for this round, when we're working into a stitch, we're only working into the back loop only, or if we're on a corner, we're working into the corner. So now I'm going to chain one, skip one again, and this time I'm going to single crochet into the chain two space. Ooh. Now we're gonna chain two, create that corner, and single crochet again into that chain two gap space. Now we're going to chain one, and we're going to single crochet, we're gonna skip one and then single crochet into the next stitch. All right, so I'm at the end of round five. I single crocheted into the chain two gap space and then I did two single crochets and now I've chained one and now we're gonna skip this last stitch and I'm gonna single crochet into the first chain of my beginning chain. So here's my beginning chain. I'm gonna single crochet into, oops, first chain, or sorry, I'm gonna join with a slip stitch to that first chain because that second chain is acting as 
the single or the chain one cap space and that first chain is acting like a stitch just like that all right our last round round six is a lot like round four so we're just single crocheting all the way across the top the corners is like it was before you're going to single crochet into the corner chain two single crochet into the corner every time you get to a stitch you're single crocheting into the back loop only and every time you get to a chain one gap space you're single crocheting into that gap space so you're going to chain one and then you're going to single crochet into the chain one gap space so right into the hole there grab your yarn and pull it through and single crochet and then this next stitch we're going into the back loop only I'm at a gap space, so I'm going into the gap, single crochet, and then I'm at a stitch, so single crochet in the back loop only. I continue to do this until I get to, to the corner. So I have one more stitch, I'm gonna work into the back loop. And then when I get to the corner, I'm gonna single crochet into that chain two gap space. And then I'm gonna chain two and then I'm going to single crochet into that chain two gap space again. Now I'm at a stitch, so I'm going to single crochet into the back loop only, into my gap space, into the back loop only, into the gap space, and so on. So you keep doing that all the way around. By doing this, again, it really defines those holes and those spaces, and I think gives a really cool a uh, neat look to the edge of the square. So that was design, square design A. Now let's do square design B, which has this cool circle with the little poofy looking stitches in the middle. So to start us off, we are going to chain three. And now we're going to work 11 double crochets into the third chain from the hook. So not this chain, or that chain, but this very first chain, we are going to work 11 double crochets. And as you may have guessed from our first square, your beginning chain is going to count as a stitch. So as you crochet your double crochets into that chain, you'll see you're starting to form a circle, it's sort of forcing you to go around. All right, so I'm at the end of round one and now I need to slip stitch into the top of my beginning chain. To join this round off. So you just have a circle like this. Now for round two I'm going to chain one and what creates these little bumps is actually just a treble crochet. Um, so I've chained one and now I'm going to treble crochet in the top of the beginning chain from the previous round. So the where I just did my slip stitch is where I'm going to create a treble crochet. So for a treble you yarn over twice I'm going to insert my hook into the stitch, grab my yarn and pull it through. Now I'm going to yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through those last two. So I have this big long stitch. And now I'm going to single crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch. And what this is going to do, it's going to force this treble to sort of fold over and stick out. So do you see how that treble sort of folds up and sticks out? So again, we're going to treble crochet, but this time into the back loop only of the same stitch that we just worked our single crochet. So I've yarned over twice into the same stitch, into the same back loop only. I'm gonna grab my yarn and pull it through, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Now I'm going to single crochet into the back loop only of my next stitch. So right in here, 
And again, that's making that treble that I just did bend over a little bit. And now I'm going to treble into that same stitch. And we're just repeating this all the way around. So for every stitch, we're working two stitches into the back loop. So again, next stitch, I'm gonna work into the back loop only. I'm gonna single crochet. And then I'm going to treble into that same back loop. And then into the next stitch, all the way around. All right, so I've just worked my last treble crochet, and now I'm going to slip stitch into my beginning chain that I created, which is going to act like a single crochet. There. Now for round three, we're going to chain one, and we're working into the back loop only of each stitch, and we're going to repeat, um, we're going to do two single crochets into the first stitch. Sorry, first we're going to start with a single crochet into the back loop only of our first stitch. Now we're going to do a repeat of two single crochets into the next stitch and then one single crochet into the stitch after that. So again, we're just working into the back loop only. Two single crochets. And then into the next stitch one or into the back loop of the next stitch one single crochet so again back loop only for everything two single crochets and then one single crochet into the next stitch back loop only two single crochets back loop only one single crochet all the way around all right, so I've skipped ahead here a bit because a lot of this is really similar to design A. Um, this is the end, I've just finished round four. And now round five is where we're going to start making this look like a square. Um, so up until this point, it looks like a circle. And now with this next row, it'll start to look like a square. So for round five, you're going to chain two and you're going to single crochet in the first chain one space. So right here, you're going to work a single crochet. And then you're going to chain one, skip one, and single crochet in the next chain one space. So chain one, skip this stitch, and then single crochet into this chain one space. You're going to do that three times. So again, And again. So now you should have your beginning chain and then one, two, three, four single crochets. Now you're going to chain two and you're going to single crochet in that same chain one space as your previous stitch. So what we're doing here is we're creating a corner. Now you're going to chain one, skip one, and single crochet in the next chain one space. All right, so now that I've repeated the chain one, skip one six times, you should have, starting at your corner, so this is my chain two right here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven single crochets. And now I'm gonna chain two, single crochet into that same whoop, same gap space. And again, I'm creating another corner. All right, now I'm going to do the following repeat again six times. I'm gonna chain one, skip one, and single crochet into that chain one gap space. I'm gonna do that six times. All right, so including my corner, this is my chain two here, I should have seven single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I'm gonna chain two again, and I'm gonna single crochet into 
that same gap space to create another corner. And now again, I'm gonna do that repeat of chain one, skip one, single crochet into the next, chain one gap space six times. six so here is my corner with my chain two that you can see where I've worked two single crochets so I'm going to count this single crochet one two three four five six seven so this will be another corner I'm going to chain two single crochet into that same gap space and again I'm going to chain one skip one single crochet And then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to join with my beginning chain. So, all right, so I just joined with a slip stitch to my first chain of my beginning chain because that is going to act like a single crochet. Now for this last round, round six, it's very similar to your first square. Um, you're just single crocheting into the back loop or into the chain one space um, all the way around and then again creating those corners as you go or reinforcing those corners as you go. All right so once you've completed your rows of double crochet you're going to fold your sweater in half so that the neck hole is at the top and as you can see it's one square the missing square for the neck hole on the front and the back and then oh gosh I keep hitting the camera and then uh, this is your bottom with the double crochet row or rows um, to the sides so bottom top and it's folded in half uh, you are going to start at the bottom and you're just going to thread some yarn around a darning needle and you're just going to whip stitch um, the front and back together to like close the side up. So you're just working into the back loop only and you're just taking, you're just going stitch for stitch. So you're inserting your needle into that stitch, the back loop and the back loop of the one that's beside it. So just doing this all the way up until it'll tell you in the written pattern, but you're going to stop because we don't want to close that up. You need uh, a hole for your arm. So we're going to leave um, a gap here that's open so that you can attach um, your sleeve. Okay, so to attach the sleeve, um, this is my neck opening. I've seamed up the side and I've left a hole here where I'm going to attach my sleeve. Um, I start with the double crochet row that we added, or you may have added more than one um, to your sleeve. That is pointing down, so that's sort of in the, the underarm of your sweater, um, and that way it'll just be sort of a square at the top, um, or squares at the top. The extra edging that we added is at the bottom uh, of the sleeve. So I started down here. And you're just going to uh, whip stitch all the way around, joining the sleeve to the sweater. So I just go stitch for stitch, and I go into the back loop of my double crochet from my sweater, and I go into the back loop of the last stitch along the border of my squares. And I'll show you what I do when I get to a corner. So. I'm just going to, I've threaded my darning needle with some yarn and I'm going to insert my needle into the back loop of a stitch on a square and then into the back loop um, of a stitch on the sweater, just like that. So again, I'm just going stitch for stitch. Every time I see a stitch, I line them up. And when I get to a corner, 
you're going to go into the chain two gap space and then into the next stitch of the sweater. Okay, for the trim along the bottom edge of the sweater and along your sleeve, um, I really liked the scalloped look, so I didn't wanna mess with that too much, but there needed to be something um, to kind of make this look a little more finished. So I just did simple single crochets into the back loop only, and when I came to a gap space, I just single crocheted into the gap space. So you can see here I worked, I'll turn it this a little easier to see. I single crocheted into each of the back loops. And then when I got to a gap space, I single crocheted into the gap space and then into the next gap space and then continued with my single crochets into the back loop only. That's for the bottom of the sweater. For the sleeves, you're going to single crochet again into the back loop only but whenever you reach a corner, um, so whenever you reach the chain two gap spaces, you're going to single crochet two together. And what that's going to do, single crochet two together, what that's going to do is um, taper the end of your sleeve in a little bit so you don't have as much of like a bell sleeve. It'll be tapered in a little bit more um, just by making these two sort of one uh, together. So, all right, so we are on to the collar section of the pattern now. So this is my sweater with the sleeve. Uh, this is the collar or the neck hole, I should say, and we're gonna create a collar. Um, so right now you can see this is very square and what we wanna do is create a curve. Um, and in order to do that, we're gonna do short single crochet, single crochet stitches along here and then when we come to the corner we're going to do some taller stitches and that will sort of create more of a circular shape around this neck hole so you are going to attach your yarn if you have your sweater like this folded in half this is the front this other side is the back um, you are going to rotate it so that you have the shoulder on this side, and you are going to attach your yarn into the first single crochet stitch. So again, here's the corner piece. You can see this first single crochet here into the back loop is where I'm going to attach my yarn. So there are probably better ways to attach your yarn, but I'm just gonna tie a simple knot into that back loop. And now I'm going to follow the instructions for round one of the collar. Oops, sorry, hit my camera there. All right, so I'm going to chain one, and this is going to count as a stitch in my stitch count. Now I'm going to single crochet into the back loop only of the next 13 stitches. So right into here, into that back loop, a single whoop, sweater's falling. Single crochets, so 13 of them. All right, so I've skipped ahead here. I've crocheted those 13 single crochets into the back loop only. And now I'm getting close to this first corner where I said we're gonna start building it out, um, sort of create to create more of an oval instead of this straight angle. So uh, in the next stitch, we're going to create a half double crochet in the back loop only. So we've, we're building it up a little taller. So we single crochet to half double crochet. Now we're going to work a double crochet into the chain two space. So if you remember from when we made our squares, these little corners are what's called a chain two space. And we're going to crochet into that space. So I've yarned over. I'm gonna put my hook into that hole, into that chain two space, grab the yarn and pull it through, and yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. Now we are going to do a double crochet two together into the chain two space. So the same chain two space we just worked into and into the next chain two space. So we're kind of joining 
these two chain two spaces together. So I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna insert my hook into this chain two space, grab my yarn and pull it through, and grab my yarn and pull through too. And now I'm gonna yarn over again and insert my hook into the next chain two space, grab my yarn and pull it through, yarn over and pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through three. And that completes my double crochet two together. All right, so I've got a double crochet into this chain two space, then my double crochet two together. Now I'm going to create a treble crochet into this same chain two space. This is gonna be our tallest stitch that we're working into this corner section here. So I've created my treble. Now I'm going to double crochet two together. So I'm gonna continue working into this same chain two space, but I'm also going to be working into the next chain two space. So I've yarned over and insert my hook into that chain two space, yarn over and pull through and yarn over and pull through two, yarn over again. Now into my next chain two space, I'm gonna grab my yarn, pull it through two, and then pull it through all three. So sort of rotating around here. Now, so we're just sort of following what we did leading into the corner, we're gonna do leading out of the corner. So after that double crochet two together, we're going to double crochet into that chain two space. And now we're going to half double crochet into the back loop only of this next stitch. And now we're going to, ooh, sorry, my sweater is sliding off the edge of the table I'm working on here. Uh, now we're going to, sorry, single crochet into the back loop only of the next few stitches. And what you can see, what I hope you can see that we did here is um, sort of softened this corner. So before it was a straight edge and now we've kind of created this soft turn by creating these, by filling in this corner with these taller stitches. So we did the half double crochet right, what was that, right here and right here. And then we did a double crochet double crochet two together and a treble crochet. So we're going to single crochet all along the bottom here into the back loop only, and then we're going to repeat what we did here into this corner. All right, so I've completed my 13 single crochets, and now we're going to again move into this corner and we're just repeating what we did on the other corner over here. So I've got a half double crochet into the back loop only, and then a double crochet into this first chain two gap space, then a double crochet two together, and we're going to be working into this gap space and into the next gap space. So into the space that we just worked into, into the next chain two gap space, and I've completed my double crochet two together. Now we're going to do the highest stitch, which is our treble crochet. Two, three, and now we're going to double crochet two together. So again, into this chain two gap space and then into the next one. Oop. Now I'm going to double crochet into that same, that last chain two gap space in this corner. And then I'm gonna work a half double crochet into the back loop only of this first stitch. Now we're going to single crochet in the back loop only. And then when we get to the next set of chain two gap spaces, I'll show you what to do. All right, so we have made our way down, worked this corner so that it created more of an oval shape. We worked our way across, again, created more of an oval shape in this corner, and then worked our way back up again to the opposite shoulder. 
So now we've come to another set of chain two gap spaces. I've got one more stitch left, which I'm going to single crochet into the back loop only. Now I'm going to single crochet into this chain two gap space. Just working over that loose end. Now we're going to single crochet two together. So this one and into the next chain two gap space, we're joining them together. And then I'm going to single crochet into that second chain two gap space. So we're just keeping this straight. We're not trying to grow or make this any higher because this is at the shoulder. So we don't need to do what we did down here. We're just trying to go straight across. Uh, now we're going to single crochet into the back loop. Again, all across the, the top of this square. And then now we're working, so we completed sort of the front of our collar on the front side of our cardigan. Now we're working, oops, hit the camera. Now we're working along the back side of our collar. And so, as you can probably guess, we're going to single crochet across the top here. And then when we get to these corners here and here, again, we're gonna do those taller stitches to try and curve it out more just like we did on the other side. So I feel like you guys have got it from here since this is just a repeat of what we did on the other side. Um, and then I'll come back and show you how we make sort of the ribbed look of the collar. Okay, so you can see after round one of the collar um, that we have a bit more of sort of a circular opening here um, as opposed to like the exact angle square that we had before. We've got a bit more of a curve. So now we're going to go around and we're going to work a double crochet into the back loop only of each stitch. And this is gonna give us our base for the rib section. So after this stitch, we'll be doing um, front post and back post stitches to create a ribbed look around our collar. All right, so for round two, I've already done a few stitches so you can see what we're going for here. So we're trying to create this ribbed look by working some of our stitches um, in the, around the back post and some of our stitches around the front post. So again, for a back post, you're going to start with your hook at the back, bring it to the front and around through to the back again. Grab your yarn and complete your double crochet. For a front post, you're gonna start with your hook at the front. You're gonna take it to the back and back around to the front again, and then grab the yarn and complete your double crochet. So you see you get this ribbed look. All right, so as you can see, I'm almost done my third round of the collar. We are just doing back post and front post double crochets again. And this one's even easier because you can just, sorry, I wasn't looking <laughs> at my screen. You can just um, base it off of what you did in the previous round. So every time you come across a front post double crochet, you know you have to continue and do another front post. When you get to a back post, you do a back post until you reach your beginning chain and then you join with a slip stitch and weave in your end. So you end up with this cute ribbed collar. So um, that is it. I really hope that you found this video tutorial helpful and that you enjoy this pattern as much as I do. I'm so excited to have a Granny Square sweater. Um, I have been wearing it a ton actually. And I hope you do too. If you post any pictures, I would really love to see them. So if you can tag me at Lakeside Loops, I would appreciate it so much because I love seeing all the things that you make and the different colors that you choose. Um, it's just so cool for me. So yeah, thank you so much, guys. Take care.